Hey everyone, welcome to today's video. Welcome to the Video Game Fight School channel. So today we're going to be looking at villains that will most likely show up or the fact that Warner Brothers Games Montreal has not even shown us more villains than what we saw at the gameplay reveal at the DC Fandom event. But before I jump into the video, I wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you guys so much for 2000 subscribers. Um, you know, it's really interesting to see you guys engage in the comp, you know, the, the content and basically comment, hit the like or even dislike button in some cases. All in all, it really does help me and tell me exactly what I need to do to be able to serve you guys here as we have conversations on Gotham Knights before the game is released. Now, for those of you who actually did see the Gotham Knights, you guys, you know, basically saw the reveal showcased two major villains, actually one villain and another villain group, which they kind of just teased. I think at this point, it was, you know, a few months ago when we actually saw this. And I think right now we're getting ripe for a little bit more information. And I think one way that the studio at Warner Brothers Games Montreal can actually do this is to showcase one more or a few more villains or perhaps a villain group in kind of, I would say, in a tangible way. So if you guys remember when they started doing this reveal early in 2019, they showed that little dial and we kind of had to, you know, guess and fill in the different emblems that was there. But at the end of the day, there was a Court of Owls emblem. There was one that looked like it was a GCPD and all this other stuff. And these were really nice representations. And I think right now that we've seen Mr. Freeze and we've seen the Court of Owls, I think now they need to start maybe, you know, doing some more teases in order to get people much more interested and excited. Not only is this going to benefit the fans in terms of, you know, hype or in terms of, you know, creating that awareness, but it's at least going to open the doors for them to be able to get their product out there for other people. And so this village Villainy is a very interesting thing because one thing about superheroes uh, that you can't get away from is the superheroes are kind of nothing without their villains. You know, it's a good guy, bad guy scenario. There's nothing really too complicated with superheroes until you start to maybe flesh each individual one out. But on the basic level, it's always kind of a good guy versus bad guy thing. And so right now we've seen all the good guys. There are four of them. There's Barbara, which was Batgirl. There's Jason, who's, um, you know, the night... Um, I said the knight. I almost called him the Nightwing. He's the Red Hood. And then you have Tim, who's Robin. And also you have uh, Mr. Um, what's his name? I always forget Nightwing's name. Why? Why do I do that? I feel like I'm going to smack myself in the face. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, you have all of the of our good guys. And at the end of the day, we only have seen just a handful of the villains. So what is the next step that Warner Brothers Games Montreal is going to take? I know they've also been showing some gear stuff, which I've also sat down to, you know, analyze and all of that. But there is a need for us to start to see the role gallery in terms of, and I said, tangible, uh, you know, depictions. Now, if you look at a game like Spider-Man, you know, um, the, the Spider-Man from the PlayStation 4, which is Marvel Spider-Man of 2018, I think one of the really interesting things that they did was, you know, they when they advertised the game and when they showcased the game, they were able to give a lot of clues to the fans in order for them to be able to, you know, pretty much see, uh, you know, kind of a glimpse of what the villainy will look like. And then as the game started to, you know, come into much more flesh or draw closer, uh, the folk and Insomniac were not shy about revealing more details. And so if at this point, Warner Brothers Games Montreal is not looking forward to doing anything like that, then I think maybe the game might be just a little further off than we think, but it doesn't really change anything. If the game is scheduled to come out this year, I think they have the capability of bringing the game out this year without any fear of saying maybe moving too early. Uh, you know, and revealing too much too soon, if you get what I mean. I think that's something that we also have a concern about. But the villainy is something that is really critical because a villainy can really, really, uh, you know, establish what your game is. For those of you who remember all the Arkham games that you've played, one of the really more memorable things that you can say about some of these games, or let me say not so memorable things, is the way the villains were depicted. Let me give you a few examples. Say in the sense of Batman Arkham or Origins, the fight against Deathstroke, even though that fight right now, if you play it today, 
it's a little interesting. It's like, eh, it's not too impressive according to this, to, you know, to today's standards. But at the time that, you know, you played it in maybe 2000 and I think it was 2011 when Batman Arkham Origins came out, it was probably one of the best things that you had played in terms of a superhero versus a villain, a very established superhero versus an established villain actually, you know, going at it one on one. And so that was a very memorable experience for a lot of people. In fact, I've played that scene so many times and once in a while I'll go play Batman Arkham Origins just so that I can get to that Deathstroke fight scene. And then if you move on, say, in fact, to Arkham Knight, the more disappointing, even though it was memorably disappointing, was the fact that Batman and some of the villains did not necessarily, you know, juke it out like, say, one-on-one, especially villains that you had actually engaged in past games. Example, Deathstroke. He was in a tank. If you guys remember, that's how you dealt with Deathstroke. And then Mr. Freeze was also in a tank. When everybody who's played Batman and Arkham City knows that that fight with Mr. Freeze is definitely one of the most cerebral fights that you will, you know, will have in a superhero game where you actually have to outthink your, uh, you know, your opponent in real time, which not necessarily shows up in a lot of superhero games. I mean, yes, melee combat's usually, uh, you know, emphasized and understanding the enemy patterns when it comes to just, you know, punching and hitting one another. But then at the end of the day with Mr. Freeze, it was just one of those things where you really did have to kind of take your time. You had to walk around. You had to think about his movement and he adapted as you went on. So, yeah, if you go back and think about it, you know, there's a sequence of a few things that you can do to beat him. But you didn't know these things until you actually beat the mode or maybe sought for help to beat him. But that's what villainy usually brings to the table. So if you guys think back and look at the way that they depicted Mr. Freeze, it's not necessarily in the most uh, impressive way. In fact, this has raised some concern for some people because they actually did depict it in like kind of a rush down MMO ish type, uh, you know, horde thing where all of you run after a boss. And then as you're hitting him, numbers are flying everywhere and he's got a a few moves here and there. Doesn't really, uh, you know do anything bad i mean yes he has special moves he's got special takedowns he's got unblockables if you guys notice the first move he did was just an unblockable right now but i don't know how this melee combat you know is going to actually measure up to what you know we've seen in the past but i'm not going to dare to try to judge from seeing just a few seconds of footage that's no way to evaluate the situation but let's actually just kind of stop with our you know our request for now which is we would like to see some more villains and we would like to basically see what they're, you know, about. And we'd like to see them actually come into the picture and start using them as, you know, the studio is marketing and the studio is actually creating awareness so that players actually know kind of what to um, start looking forward to uh, and start to actually run around and try to piece the puzzles together. This is the stuff that people love doing. And I feel like Warner Brothers Montreal has the opportunity to use that right now. Anyways, let me hear your thoughts in the comment section. What villains do you want to see in Batman's, uh, you know, the Batman themed game, uh, Gotham Knights? It's not Batman's game, even though Batman's in it. And the game's premise is that Batman is no longer whatever. Ah, It's so confusing, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Hopefully we'll see in another video. Peace out.